Hello, this is Kevin. In this video, I'm going to be turning a ring on this lathe. The material that I'm using is stainless steel, alloy 316L. I've actually seen a lot of misinformation on jewelry websites and such when I was researching this, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the material. All stainless steels contain a fairly high chromium content. This forms a layer of chromium oxide on the surface of the material, which protects the rest of the metal from oxidation. 316 belongs to a family known as the austenitic stainless steels. It has a large amount of nickel added, which stabilizes the austenitic crystal structure at room temperature. This makes for a steel that is strong, ductile, and non-magnetic, but it cannot be hardened through heat treatment. Although it contains nickel, it is still safe for people with nickel allergies, because the chromium oxide passive layer prevents the release of nickel. You can see here how the lathe works. The workpiece is spinning, and as I advance the cutting tool into the part, it shaves off a layer of the metal. Anyways, back to talking about the material. 316L is a low carbon variant, less than 0.03% by mass. It also usually has less sulfur. This makes it less sensitive to formation of carbides and sulfides at the grain boundaries, which is a potential avenue for corrosion to bypass the chromium oxide passive layer. This alloy is commonly used for medical devices and other applications where biopatic compatibility is important, which has given it the somewhat meaningless moniker of surgical grade stainless. However, it's important to note that using this material does not automatically make something biocompatible. That requires appropriate surface treatment and appropriate precautions to prevent the introduction of foreign material during the manufacturing. The wheels on the lathe, which is how you move the cutting tool, are marked so you know how much uh, you've moved the cutting tool around. But ultimately, you'll need to measure the part to get the absolute size. I'm going to take off about half a millimeter at a time until I get to the desired diameter. Okay, so I've gotten to the desired diameter and now I'm uh, repositioning the cutting tool so that I can cut a 45 degree chamfer into the edge. That's it for the outside. Now I'm going to drill out the center of the piece, starting by using this short center drill to create a pilot hole. Here I've moved up to a 3 8 inch drill bit. I've got this cutting oil and you'll see it vaporize due to the heat generated. This is perfectly normal. And finally, half an inch. It's going to make kind of an unpleasant sound, so be, be warned. Now the hole is wide enough that I can use the boring tool. It's the same kind of cutting tool that I was using on the outside diameter, but it's mounted so that I can use it to remove material from inside the hole. Here I'm just touching it off on the inside so I can zero the lathe. On this first pass, I wasn't expecting to actually be removing any material, but it turns out the hole I drilled is not quite deep enough. Anyways, now I'm going to do passes, uh, removing about half a millimeter at a time until the inner diameter gets to the desired diameter. Here I've set up the boring bar at an angle, so I can use the compound feed to cut the chamfer on the inside of the ring. The compound feed can be rotated so that the cutting tool is moved at an angle 
and in this case I set it to 30 degrees. Sorry, I'm just going to mute the audio for a second. So that's it for this side. Uh, to get the chamfer on the other side, I could cut the piece off and turn around, but it's going to be very hard to hold it. So instead I'm actually going to cut it while it's still, before I cut the piece off. This gives us a groove that corresponds to the chamfer on the other side. Finally, I'm going to part the piece off. This means uh, cutting it so that the, the ring is separated from the rest of the metal stock. And this is a particularly touchy operation because uh, you're cutting off a lot more metal than you were before since uh, the cutting tool is uh, contacting along the whole edge instead of just a single point. With stainless steels, you're supposed to go pretty fast because uh, the act of cutting it work hardens the material. But it's it's too scary for me. So I couldn't couldn't do it. And that's it. We still need to cut it to the final width and to add an external chamfer on that side. But the ring is so small that we can't hold it in the through doll chuck by itself. So I've made this expanding mandrel out of aluminum. It's got some slots cut into it so that when I put, uh, screw this tapered plug into it, um, those will move out and hold onto the piece from the inside. So now I'm going to turn the diameter of this expanding mandrel so that it fits just inside the ring. Uh, it may not look it, but I promise I am removing the material. So now I'm going to screw in the screw, which will uh, cause the this aluminum mandrel to expand, holding the ring in place from the inside. The first thing I'm going to do is cut it to the desired width. I left a little bit extra when I was parting it off because the parting tool doesn't give a very good service finish. And finally I'm going to set up the cutting tool so that I can put the external chamfer onto this side. And that's it. This particular ring wasn't actually one of the ones that I ended up using, but it's the same process for all of them.